reporting live from Vermont. Some people don't like rail trails. They don't have much variation in surface, little elevation change, and the scenery doesn't vary a whole lot. To some, they may seem a bit monotonous and boring. I'm not one of those people. When your day-to-day -day riding looks something like this, you'll appreciate the chance to ride long distances without a single car in sight. Earlier this summer, I spent the day riding the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail in Vermont. It was one day out of a week-long credit card tour of New England. We started the trip by taking Amtrak up to White River Junction and rode a different smaller trail up to Littleton, New Hampshire to check out one of my favorite breweries. I can say it comes highly recommended. We then crossed back over the border into Vermont and stayed in St. Johnsbury where the Lamoille Valley Rail Trail starts. The trail is built on the remains of a 19th century railroad. The tracks were last used back in 1994, and soon after they were abandoned, a snowmobile nonprofit group began developing plans to convert the disused tracks to a trail. After years of preliminary work, the project began construction in 2013 and was finally slated to be fully complete this summer, but things didn't go exactly as planned. A large ribbon cutting ceremony scheduled for July was postponed when devastating rain severely damaged the trail. A month later in August, over 43 miles of the trail were still off limits while rebuilding efforts continued. Back in May, we rode 50 of the 93 total miles, including much of the washed out stretch. The trail was almost entirely complete at that point with just a few areas needed to be bypassed. We swear we didn't cross this not quite totally finished covered bridge in Walcott. Heading west from St. Johnsbury, the trail climbs at a low grade for about 18 miles on crushed gravel. The scenery is very woodsy, with lots of small streams, a bit of farmland, and distant blue hills all around. It passes through small towns like Danville and Hardwick, which have a few places to buy food and water. These small gas station country stores actually have some pretty good food. At the end of the long climb is an even longer descent where we were cruising with minimal effort for at least an hour. There's a long hairpin turn along the descent at Greensboro Bend which wraps around a bunch of small farms. After Hardwick, the ride continued along the Lamoille River with lots of small crossings and charming rail bridges, many of which now need repair unfortunately. The ride into Morristown revealed some of Vermont's larger mountains in the distance. We rolled into Morristown around dusk and had a great meal at the restaurant in the town's old railroad depot. We stayed in a hotel in the northern part of the city which I would not recommend because they were not remotely friendly to cyclists. There are much better lodging options in Stowe just a few miles south of the trail. Our trip took us that way but there are 43 more miles on the trail for us to ride next time we're in Vermont. It ends in Swanton a few miles from the Canadian border. I definitely recommend checking it out once it's rebuilt. watching.